moving back to Europe, uh, Europe, I think the big difference, as I see it, with Europe is that you've got an ECB whose, whose mandate is essentially to run a sounder yeah. money, monetary policy yeah. than, than that of the Fed. Yeah. And they are now under great pressure from everyone except Germany and yes. perhaps Finland. <laughs> yeah, Holland maybe. <laughs> and Holland, Holland maybe, yes. Yeah. Um, who's, um, they're under great, great pressure to, to, um, to print because that's the only salvation anyone sees. Um, what's your take on it? How do you think that's going to evolve? Well, again, I, I must distinguish between two different scenarios the short run and the medium to long term scenario. In the short run, I think that, the, um, and I must say that uh, I'm not in the um, mainstream of the market analyst in this regard. Um, I think that the ECB must support the growth, the uh, stable and sustained growth of uh, M3 in the Eurozone. This may require that uh, these extraordinary expansionary measures may maintain for a while. But what is most important to me, the ECB must change its rule, its monetary rule, in order not to repeat in the future, in the next expansion, hopefully in the next two years time, maybe, the same errors they have made in the, in the past. What I mean is that in the past we were told that we were living under price stability, but price stability in terms of CPI, Consumer Price Index, and we didn't pay enough attention to the asset prices, financial asset prices, and real prices, real estate. It's the old thing about that it was the credit, it was a credit fuel yes. boom, wasn't it? In, exactly. In, in particularly in exactly. Spain, Italy, Greece, and so on and so forth. Exactly, and they thought that, you know, monetary expansion was not so important. Obviously, they didn't say this in their report, in their official statements. But as far as I remember, when I was studying this situation before the crisis, and every time I ask any member of the Parliament, of the European Parliament, of any member of the European Central Bank about the extraordinary growth of uh, M3, the monetary supply, broad money supply in, in the Eurozone. They said, that, okay, there must be problems with accountability, with the um, statistics, there must be changes, structural changes between M2, M3 and M1, okay, technicalities. But at the yeah. end of the day, they didn't pay enough attention to the excessive money growth and in my view, they should have, they should pay more attention in the future to the consequences of excessive money growth on prices, but not only consumer prices, but on the whole uh, uh, prices of the economy. On the whole thing, exactly. Yeah. It seems to I me, mean, it's interesting you bring that up because it seems to me they've made exactly the same mistake as um, the Peel Act, Banking yeah. Act of uh, exactly. 1844, which, yeah. which recognised um, the uh, value of, of, of real money and the notes that are issued. Um, on the back of that that, 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 that the gold and silver had to be there, but didn't recognise the effect of expanding credit in, in banks and the way that, bank, that credit can be manufactured out of thin air. Yeah, the thing is that, you know, uh, many people think, still think, politicians, and not only politicians, still economists, I must say, that they think that just uh, um, printing money, you create jobs. I know it sounds it, silly. It's but a myth. It's a myth, yes. but many people defend and support this myth in, uh, you know, in the interviews and in the in the parliaments. Oh, it's it's a, it's for for most people, it's a given, isn't it? They assume yeah. that this is true. Yeah, it is something that you know. Many people claim that the ECB should be more expansionary. Yeah. And they say, how how come? <laughs> how can they be more expansionary, with the interest rates around one percent, uh, extraordinary lending facilities to the banking system? This is extraordinary in, in historical perspective. So this is expansive. It is, and um, the, the, the ridiculous thing about it is that um, the only way in which you can really create uh, economic growth is by um, having savings as a healthy mix, if you yeah. like, in the consum you know, sort of consumption yeah. and savings. Um, and on the one hand, we've got interest rates which are so low that are destro they're destroying savings. Actually, to get the economy recovering, you need higher interest rates to encourage people to save so that you get the capital investment, and that way you will get something which is more long-lasting. But it can only be determined by the market. It can't be determined by central banks, because it seems to me that a policy committee, a monetary policy committee, uh, comp comprised of people who have very little business experience, in many cases none, they're <laughs> yeah. entirely theoretical, yeah. <laughs> is actually not the best way about Academic going at about best. it. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're right. Well, 
well, the picture that you, you're, you're drawing is, 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 is exactly the one that I have in my mind. It's very much pessimistic because I don't think they are going to uh, raise interest rates in the short run in order to keep savings uh, recovered a little bit so that uh, investment is recovering and so on and so forth. You know, As I said before, I think that the ECB must um, sustain money growth, stable money growth, in order to recover nominal income in Europe, in Europe, that's what I think, really. And afterwards, just afterwards, uh, it could be a question of months, a question of, uh, I don't know, quarters, several quarters, two or three quarters. Afterwards, the ECB must uh, resume a conventional, a more sound and sustainable monetary policy. So yes, they should uh, increase interest rates in the near future, in three, four quarters ahead. Because this is the only way to achieve uh, Price stability and price stability is a precondition for monetary growth, sorry, for economic growth. One of the key points behind what you're saying is that money is actually a product of the market, not yeah. the government. Yeah, it should be. Yes. Yeah, well, it it, be. I, absolutely, it should yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, sorry, but it's not. It should be, yes, because at least there is some competition uh, between the issuers of bank money. But, you know, this is a very restricted competition because at the end of the day, they have to be licensed by the state and they have to issue their bank money in terms of the, of the money of the central bank. So this is a very imperfect system, Absolutely. I may say. So this is not well, the best way to, to achieve a, a some money mm -hmm. a policy, I'm afraid. I'm afraid we're going to have to live with the system for the moment. Uh, yeah. It's been fascinating talking to you about um, central banks, their role in money creation and so on. And um, let's hope our worst uh, <laughs> fears aren't realised. Juan, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.